Hey, this is Daniel Norton. I'm here in my studio in New York City with Marissa. And today we're going to do a video. I want to talk a little bit about compression uh, in photos. And this came about because I was actually uh, in a video with Mark Wallace and Gavin Hoey. We, uh, and uh, Seth, we kind of made a video together shooting Mark's profile picture. And one thing is the picture that I took anyways, I got really close to Mark. And what that does is it actually changes the way somebody's face looks. And one of the conventional things that people say when they're shooting portraits is to use a long lens, right? You use a long lens for portraits. And the reason for that is really it makes you back up further, right? It's not that the long lens per se is making the person look better, it's that when the further back you stand, the more compression you have. So the more compression there is, noses look smaller, the ears move forward, you know, uh, you don't get as much distortion, if you will, in the face. But there's something about being close. You see this a lot in filmmaking where they use wide lenses and they come in really close for scenes um, and you get this kind of, it's a little distorted, it's not the most beautiful necessarily, um, but you get this really more, kind of more intimate feel. So we're gonna use the same lens. Um, I've got my Hasselblad X1D, I've got the 90 millimeter lens uh, as opposed to switching lens so I can show you. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna shoot some close and then I'm gonna back up and I'm gonna shoot it with the same lens and then we'll just crop in to show you kind of same lens, how different it looks based on where you stand. Right? So just to go over the lighting, so you guys know, we're doing kind of a really simple beauty portrait lighting here. I've got uh, Profoto uh, B1X with a beauty dish right here. It's kind of a part of the shot, you probably can't see it. That's gonna be the key light on, on Marissa. In the back, I've got a, a B2, each one fitted with a one by three softbox to give her kind of a, kind of a glamour uh, rim, right? To make it really glamoury. And uh, we have this very expensive uh, reflector that I made from Home Depot. So we're gonna use this uh, to create a really simple portrait. I think I'll start the, with a close one. Um, and we'll see what that looks like, then I'll back up and show you guys the difference so you can have a seat. Um, so we're set here at uh, f4, at 250th of a second, um, ISO 100, which gives us basically a black frame if we do not uh, use the flash, but of course we're using flash. So I'm tethered into focus here, which is Hasselblad software, and we'll take a shot uh, with no reflector first because just see what it looks like. Right, we're gonna look at our exposure. That all looks good. I have a crop on there for some reason, because I was messing around with it. Boop. Okay, so there we go, right? That's Marissa nice and close. Now, when I'm making uh, portraits of somebody, like a fun portrait, I like to be close. I feel like it, it can add a little dimension to it. So let's shoot some like this, right? What I generally do is get as close as I can until I can't focus anymore, because it's past my minimum focus distance, and I just back up. So here, of course, because the light's so high on her, she's gonna get shadow if she puts her chin down, so we will add the reflector in a second. You may notice too that like, whenever I use reflectors, I don't know if you guys ever noticed this, but I always get everything set up in meter and stuff before I add the reflector. I know some people put in the reflector and then meter, but I feel this gives you a better kind of cleaner exposure and you're really seeing what the reflector's doing. So I'm gonna bring this up nice and tight. Um, and this is a silver reflector, so it's really gonna kick light uh, back up on her. And if you wanna make sure, you can always throw the model light on for a second. And then we can see it. Yeah, good. All right, here we go. So same tight shot, but with the reflector. You can see there the difference that's going to make. Really glamours it up. So if you're going for that glamour look, glamour shots. You know, this will add that to it. But, you know, and yet we're still close. Oops. That's going to be out of focus because I wasn't ready. There, very good. That's pretty. One other advantage you have of being close like this is your depth of field becomes very shallow. So if you're into that, um, we're definitely going to have shallow depth of field because of our distance here. Good. All right. So that looks pretty cool, right? You can see how round her face looks and everything. I mean, this is pretty much what Marissa looks like. All right, so uh, <laughs> now I'm gonna back up. Now, because I don't care for, about anything but her, her face, I don't care the reflectors in the shot and everything. So you'll see when I shoot this, um, it's going to be in the first shot. So here we go. That's good, hold that. Okay, stay where you are for a second, please. So I'm gonna come in. And I'm going to add a crop to this, just so as I'm shooting, you guys will see what we're getting. So obviously I have all the stuff on the thing, which is the advantage of having a supersonic megapixel camera, I guess. Uh, you don't have to worry about that. Perfect, all right, so. All right, now, let's shoot a few more, because you get paid by the frame. You never want to get it on the first shot. Bring the reflector up a tiny bit. Yeah, good, right there, nice. Now you could get a stand to hold the reflector, but this actually gives models a uh, you know, workout, helps them with their clavicles. Is that a, hold on, isn't clavicle a bone? So it probably doesn't make a difference. All right, so anyways, it does something. Good, 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 one more. 
awesome. Okay, now, so let's take a quick peek. So they've been cropping in here, and you can see, oh, that's pretty nice, right? So this is um, a nice shot of Marissa here. I'm gonna make this one green. Let's go back up to where we shot with the other lens and pick a similar shot, right? That's with the, not the other lens, rather the other position. All I'm doing here is I'm gonna basically just, I just tag them both green so I can come in and, and just see those. All right, so these are the ones we just shot. All right, so we can see, right, I mean, I, obviously they're not exactly the same crop. Here, I'll crop this one a little bit. By the way, this is another advantage of shooting tethered. When you are working like this with a client and there is a certain crop you wanna get or whatever, you can just add it right to your shot as you're shooting and then they're seeing what they're gonna get so they don't get all concerned about the background and stuff. All right, so we can see here, if you take a look at her face shape, right, and her nose. See how her nose looks a little bit wider in this one? This is where I'm closer to her. Further back, you see how her chin, like look at the shape of her chin. And here's some from earlier, right? So further back, right, up close. Further back, right, look at the cheeks. Look at the, the shape of her face. Wider, right, and more natural, more, more intimate more kind of uh, glamorous. So depending on who you're shooting, right, and the look you're going for, because perhaps you're shooting somebody who is, you got a big thing here, we're gonna put signs on here. If anybody wants to buy advertising, we're gonna start doing yeah, this now. Yeah, your video. ad here. We can do this for sure. So, yeah, so what we'll do is, um, if, you're, um, if you're shooting somebody, let's say that has a heavier face or, uh, and you want to get uh, you know, the more narrow look, Right, then backing up or using a long lens is definitely gonna help. If you wanna add a little youthfulness to it, uh, getting closer will, will help get the face rounder, but also just being that, that closer look really gives that intimacy to it, so depending on what you're shooting. One or the other is not right or wrong. I feel like for portraits, I like getting in close. I like that feel of a little distortion, but if you want that to lo look as ideally beautiful as possible, backing up is gonna help, or, you know, and I should say, when you back up, it's always best to use a longer lens so you're not wasting all those megapixels because megapixels are a terrible thing to waste. We've got to save those, you know. Otherwise, they'll keep making cameras with more and more megapixels and we have to keep buying more cameras and nobody wants to do that, right? Nobody wants that. All right, so anyways, thanks for watching, guys. I uh, hope this was helpful. Uh, be sure to leave comments below. Uh, subscribe to Adorama TV. Follow Marissa. We'll put the links in the uh, description. Follow me on uh, Facebook and YouTube, uh, Daniel Norton Photographer. And I'll see you next time on set.